Now we'll have Sister Carol to read today's scripture. Psalm 23, verses 1 through 3a. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. And Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 38a. That day when evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. Thank you, Carol. May our Lord add the blessings to the understanding and the application of his words. Now, since I have come back from the disability leave, we have been refreshing on our mission vision statement. So today, let's continue on. Our mission statement says, we are a multi-ethnic and a multi-generational church family united by the love for God and committed to bring the whole gospel to the whole world and to build wholesome persons. So the last sermon, I touched about what the, the whole gospel means. The whole gospel is to be drawn from the whole Bible, and for our personal, at our personal level, it starts from personal salvation, and it, it's the ultimate, uh, the the climax, is at the God's church co-ruling the heaven and the earth. So the good news for all children is that right now we all gonna start preparing for it, no matter what professional occupation you are, you are called to perfect what you are due, to be prepared for that day when we are all going to rule the heaven and earth from all different society sectors. So I will not talk about the whole world except by saying that Yes, I do hope that our church will one day send our own mission team to the world, except by, besides, by sending mission money to the many of the missionary agencies. So today, I will spend more time and talk about what the wholesome person means. What does it mean to build wholesome person? What does the word wholesome mean? I know in the Bible time, the word wholesome appeared quite a few times in the Bible, but back then, the word wholesome means just whole, the complete, not partial, but whole, more physically, more physically whole. But that's not exactly what I meant here, because language involves giving you an example Language involves, our family has a four-person family chat, I mean five-person, uh, my husband, me, and the three children. So one day, Sam went to college, sent us a video of his dorm room, and the four rooms with four, uh, three, four boys, and then how the common area, and we said, oh, nice, cool, and I commented, oh, yeah, the bed is too high, lower it. You know, mom, you know, mom sings. And then, <laughs> and then he said, oh, yeah. And then we all said, oh, nice room, nice dorm. And then Sam's commented, fire. What, fire? 
What? When? How? Where's fire? Did you escape? I was all on alert. I was anxiously waiting for the return message. What's going on? Until my sweet boy Timothy replied, "Oh, mom, fire in urban dictionary means good, fantastic, crazily good in a way." So they were still talking about how the the dorm was good, and the the adjective was fire. <laughs> When did the word fire got to mean crazily good? <laughs> All those young people, I just like we speaking English, but we. Are not understood. The language evolving too fast. There is a dictionary that they keep that we do not. We need to catch up to them. I would just say. So the word wholesome means not only physically whole. So in the dictionary, we can check the in our. Old people's dictionary says it's whole, and the more updated version says it's healthy body, mind, and soul. Now I made sure I checked the urban dictionary, <laughs> what the wholesome means, and in the urban dictionary, the word whole has a lot more adjective is to it. It says it's an embodiment of the following: it's selfless, it's considerate, it's sweet, it's compassionate, it's thoughtful, it's generous, it's genuine, it's don't talk trash about other people. And then you read underneath the example is like this: Do you know the conversation between three、uh, young people? Do you know that Pat? Keeps an Excel spreadsheet of all the money he borrows from his parents, so he doesn't burden them," said Chelsea. "Wow, really? That's so wholesome!" exclaimed Trent. "Like that's wholesome. That's responsible. <laughs> And yes, it is. It is a great Sarah I'm chewing. Okay." Young people also use the word wholesome, except to them, the wholesome is such a catch-all phrase, a catch-all adjective. It means all the good virtue, all the good virtue you can think of combined in that one person. Okay, that's good. Actually, that's what I wanted to get. Wholesome. Let's use that word wholesome. Let's build that good wholesome person using whatever dictionary that we can use, old or young, and so that we can speak to all generation of people. See, we are multi generational, right? So, word wholesome. A person of wholesomeness. If you have a person. Combining all of the good virtue, it has to be a person with deep faith. You cannot have without faith to have all this virtue. I tried when I was before I was a Christian. I failed. I know exactly how hard it is. Because all the goodness is relative, and no human being's goodness is as good as holy as what Jesus Christ modeled in the Bible. So, if you want to combine all the goodness, a wholesomeness, it has to be a person of Christian faith. I would say. A person of Christian faith. So I will use a four-part sermon. A person after God's heart—that's his, um, his what God calls him in the Bible. David, his words. 
describing him, his life, and God. Psalm 23. It's unfortunate that Psalm 23 is only being used, mostly just being used at a funeral. But it's such a good psalm that David actually poured his whole heart to write this psalm. So this four-part sermon series will delve deep into it to describe what a wholesome person means. Today is the first sermon. A wholesome person can. A wholesome person can and rest, can rest in the Lord. David, we may all know, live a real hard life, even a lot harder, a lot harder than many of us have lived. Being a shepherd boy, the last, the youngest of many sons, forgotten by the father even, by the siblings, looked down upon by his siblings, but called by God to be the next king. But because of this high calling, has to fled to become a fugitive, be pursued after, and almost lost his life multiple times. Because of his calling, he got his wife and lost his wife. And because of his healing, he has pretend he was a crazy, a mad person, so that he can live. And be, once he become a king, he has experienced the temptation, the fleshly temptation. As all human being, he sinned, except his sin is more terrible and he murdered. Has his son been killed? And his, has his son rebelled against him and then been killed by his officers? Till finally, coming to the end of his life, he wrote this song. The first three verses, started as the Lord is my shepherd I lack nothing he makes me lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside green quiet waters he refreshes my soul with all of those happening in his life, with all those torments, with all of those temptations, with all of those failure and triumph, up and downs, the first thing that he can remember is God gave him rest. When the enemies were pursuing him, he can rest and sleep because he knows that God is his protector. When he's fighting the battles, he knows God will give him, give him rest because he's fighting for God. When his sons were rebelling against him, he knows God can still give him rest. And he's Hope is in the Lord. Because he knows God intimately, he can put all his burdens, cast all his burdens onto God and have his well-deserved rest. Will a person live a hard time like that? He also had a long life. Think about that. Only a person who really know about God, 
a person can really know that God has shouldering all, then the person can rest well, can be physically healthy, so that all of tomorrow's work will start from tonight's good sleep. David knows God intimately. And he knows that God is God and he is he. And all he needs to do is what he can do. And God will take care of all the consequences. So do not need to be anxious about tomorrow because tomorrow will take care of tomorrow's business. Jesus, in the same way, have his, all his disciples sitting in a boat, crossing the, over to the other side. Does Jesus know a storm is coming? Yes, God is omniscient. Of course he's coming. And he is sleeping. God knows. God knows. God allows the storm to come is a test of our faith. God allows the storms in our lives to come to see that truly we can grasp tight of him and know that he still have everything in control. In another psalm, David's psalm, it described a psalm that says, do not, do not be anxious. Come and see what Lord can do. Come and see what, that God can make war cease. And come and see that God will break the bolts and shatter the spears. Be still. And know, I'm God, the Lord says. So be still, our soul. Be still, our soul. Let God be God. And let us be us. The deep rest comes from knowing God deeply and intimately, trusting that God has everything in his control and everything that he allows to happen will never, never pass what we can endure. So, be still. Know that God is God. A wholesome person, person can rest in God like David. A wholesome person can rest in the Lord because he or she knows the Lord intimately. A wholesome person, when it comes to the person, the first impression is peace. You can sense the, the ethos of peace, the presence of peace in that person because that person knows the Lord intimately. The person rests in God like a baby resting in the mama's womb, safe and secure. It is a mark of our faith. Being able to rest in the Lord is a mark of our faith. It is a sign of wholesomeness. Let's grow to be so wholesome like David, like Jesus, 
and like many saints described in the Bible. Now let's pray. Dear God, we come before you. We ask that your peace reign in our heart and you grant us the rest that our soul desires. Do not let this world, do not let all the distractions to read the peace out of us because, Lord, you are the prince of peace. Lord, you made human beings to be human beings and you being God so that we can enjoy you. the creator and the finisher of our faith. So we surrender all of our anxieties unto you. May your peace reign in our heart and may all of the works in our hands start from that peace from you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.